wild, open, no limits, plenty of enjoyment, free. It was a lot more um, it was a lot more adventure about it then. Today, if I can compare it with another sport, today's World Rally Championship is very much like the 100 yard meter sprint. You know, it's, uh, there are lots of short stages, the days are relatively short. We would be, we'd be driving for sort of a day and a half. And you know, in Greece you'd drive for, you know, a couple of days with very little rest at all. And it would just, go, it was a, it was quite a, an endurance event. It wasn't just the sprint it is anymore. Give you an idea. I think uh, the I think the average uh, total uh, stage times are what two and a half hours, two yeah, days, something that, like that. Something like that. In I looked at Acropolis four years ago when we when we won it uh, uh, well, second time in a row. But that's not the point. But the point is that uh, our total stage time was 13 plus hours. 13 yeah. plus hours. So yeah. that gives you a difference. Four yeah. or five times the length of competition that is today. It's quite an interesting season. Ari, I'll have to remind Ari of this, but Ari was actually had to go in the army. He went into the army that season because he had to do national service. In, in, your, in Finland, before your 30th birthday, you don't get your new passport unless you've served your army service. So he went into the army and we had this plan to do a series of events that year. And, um, and Ari was getting nervous about, said, oh, I don't want to do all these events traveling everywhere and it's going to be a long year. And I've got my army service. But I think after the first month in the army, you said, sign me up for everything. Just let's go on any rally we can. Uh, Didn't start what? very well in Monte Carlo. No, no, no. Did we retire? We crashed. Did we crash? Yeah, we, we, we either crashed or won. There was nothing in between. In, in Monte Carlo? No, there's in the whole season. No. no and, uh, that's what I can't remember. But all I remember that I was leading when the Audis retired in the Portugal rally. And when I saw the last Audi, by a roadside, I realized, oh, we are leading. And we're leading by five minutes. And I got so nervous, oh, come on, we're going to win this 20 more, 20 more points. We are leading the championship. And after all, we were privately financed Little David Sutton's team with some private sponsoring. And uh, some quite big sponsor. <laughs> but, yeah, but anyway, it was a private, private, private operation. And first few corners into the following special states, we crashed. Crashed because uh, because of that pressure. Well, we are leading, so it was very much a roller coaster it drive. Was up and down year. With Monte Carlo, we crashed. Portugal, with uh, Sweden, finished second to Anna. Yeah. Portugal, we crashed. Um, the next event we went, I can't remember. In Acropolis, we won. Yeah. Brazil, we crashed again. Crashed and Argentina, yeah. we won. The other Argentina, way around. we won. Okay. And then Thousand Lakes, we Thousand won. Thousand Lakes, yeah. Won. San Remo, we had a small crash. Small. And then. RAC we finished we were second or third, I can't remember that. Second, second, second. Second, second. And that was it. And Ivory Coast in, in Ivory between. Coast. Yeah. We we crashed there as well. But we finished last. No, with the lorry, come on. With the lorry. Oh, right, the lorry, lorry coming the other way. Oh, I remember His that. memory doesn't serve him very yeah, well anymore. Exactly. So suspense, the excitement was there right till the very, very end. Yeah. We had four cars that year and um, one of them was destroyed, another one sort of in the Bewley Motor Museum and the other one's in private hands, and this one's ours. Um, it took John O'Connor, who built the car in 1981, one month to build it before the Acropolis Rally. That's all he was allowed. This time, he rebuilt it. It took him two years. That's how yeah. fastidious the rebuild was this time round. Um, the car won Acropolis Rally. It won Thousand Lakes Rally. And it was seventh in San Remo. So it's a, it's a pretty important part of the history of Ari and myself in winning that year's World Championship. So we've got the, um, the two-litre BDA engine. Um, it's an iconic engine, it's, uh, it's, you see them in so many Ford Escorts these days and it's got that extraordinary sound about it as well. So it's uh, obviously a lot of the rallies in those days were at night time, so full Corello lights across the front and we, we've kept the lights on even here for Goodwood. If you go round the car, you actually today everyone does their cars with stickers. All the liveries are done with stickers. This is actually sign written as it was in the day. A guy who paints canal boats painted it this time round. So, and then let's look in the inside and have a look inside. Well, Ari's just trying to get himself comfortable inside the car. 
it's actually not the most wonderful driving position. I honestly wonder how we did so many miles in those cars in those days with such a strange driving position. And um, very simple inside, not the sort of fancy crossbars and sort of safety devices you see these days. But for me, the instrument panel, the halders measuring the distances and uh, a simple wheel brace by my feet there, changing punches quickly. And then you move around to the back of the car. You can see we're on asphalt tyres at the moment for the hill climb here at Goodwood. And uh, very small wheels compared with the current wheels you find these days. And again, when you come to the boot, it's all so simple. An aluminium fuel tank, very simple filling system, and the dry sump system. Dry sump engine pumping the oil through to the engine at the front and a battery. That's about as simple as you can get for a rally car, but it was pretty effective in 1981. Car is a confidence inspiring, and, and I've got two cars in my life. It's really, or two and a half. I mean, it's a Ford Escort and then the Peugeot 205 Turbo 60, the famous four wheel drive car, and to a certain extent, the little Subaru Impreza also. But, you know, Escort fitted my driving style spectacular, sideways, oversteering, uh, and, and like the old saying was that you know, at the end of a special stage you had more flies on those side windows than on your windscreen. And well, that's what did my driving style, and it was a very, very easy car to drive and fantastic engine. The rest of the car was very simple, but it, I, I, I enjoyed driving that car, and it was, it was manifested in my driving style. But it's a very simple car as well. If you look at it now, and you look at the safety of it, you look at the simplicity of the engine, everything about it, it's, it's just, it, it is delightful when you look at it and you hear that note, that BDA note, it's, uh, it's still a, a really iconic car.